Hey guys, welcome back. So it's been requested quite a few times for me to do some trade breakdowns and also give an insight of how the DRS strategy works. So I wanted to do a trade breakdown for a trade that we took last week with the DRS strategy on a UK 100. So UK 100 is one of the new assets that we are trading with the DRS strategy and it works amazingly well with it. We have about a year and a half's worth of data back tested and collected for this. Uh, asset and it's working absolutely brilliantly so let's have a look at a trade that was taken live within the community and the the community were able to follow along if they want to take the trade themselves and follow along they are more than welcome to do so so all trades i take they are live trades i take them in front of people uh so that's both winners and losers there's full transparency here so let's have a look at this trade so first off uh i'm going to delete this and i'm going to use the bar replay function to walk through the thought process on how we came to the conclusion of taking this trade so this was Thursday morning, uh, 4th of April, and this is the London session. So just to quickly familiarise yourself with the setup that I have on here and what certain things mean. A lot of these horizontal lines, these are liquidity points. Anything with a dotted line is a daily, weekly, monthly, high or low. Okay, this grey patch here, this is the Asia session, and I have the Asia session finishing at 7 o'clock, more as a visual representation of where Frankfurt has opened. And then I have these two vertical lines that represent the trading window where I will only execute a trade within that time window. So this is 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the morning, UK time. So we're looking at the London Open here. So let's advance candles forward a little bit we can see we do have a fair value gap here but this is not a fair value gap we're going to be interested in because it's outside the window we won't be looking to take a trade from there the fair value gap that we will be entering on will be it will need to be inside that trading window if it's outside the trading window then it's not valid we are not taking that trade so London Stock Exchange has opened. We've had an aggressive or quite an impulsive open just here. Now, looking over to the left, we have a previous day high. That's this dotted purple line just there. We can see we have uh, pushed above that. Now, one thing we usually wait for is to see how does price action behave after taking a significant high, whether that's a session high like the Asia session, London session, uh, or even a daily high, weekly high, something like that. So we will observe and just see how price action behaves. If we have a strong correction of price pushing the opposite way, we will look to trade with that direction. If price continues to push higher than the daily high, we will look to continue trading in that direction if the momentum permits. So First candle was opened, we've had a nice open just there. We've then immediately had a correction and what's happened is we've come into this fair value gap. So at that point, we're still sitting on our hands. We are waiting to see, does that fair value gap get a reaction from and we continue pushing higher or does that low fail and we start seeing further bearish momentum? So again, at that point, we're sitting on our hands. We are waiting, we are staying patient. If we don't get a trade in the window, that's not a problem. We have a New York session we can come to later on to look for opportunities. So at this point, we are a little bit more range bound. OK, there's not really a lot of commitment going on. All right. But so far, we are seeing the early signs of this daily high here um, completely failing. So we've had price break above this high. Obviously, we can see this strong candle pushing down. But these next three candles, it's showing that price is actually wanting to try and push higher and stay above that level. So at that point, we're not quite looking for an entry just yet. We are waiting to see, is that commitment being sustained? And if it is, we would look to get involved. So next candle here, we can see we've had a nice engulfing candle. It's completely um, engulfed the London open candle. We could then see we are closing comfortably above that previous day high. Uh, so the momentum right now is looking bullish. And this is where we will start looking for our entry. So flick forward one more candle. We can now see we have a fair value gap. So the indicator for the DRS, it plots the fair value gaps only within the windows we're interested in. So it's quite a small fair value gap. But what we can see here is 
candle one, we've got candle two, we've got candle three. We have three candles that have set up the fair value gap, and this is what we are interested in. So this is quite a good fair value gap as well. We can see candle two has closed at this point, but then candle three has closed here. Now this is usually a good indication that the very next candle after this, or the next couple of candles, is going to come and tap into this fair value gap and head off in our favor. So these are the more preferable fair value gaps. Sometimes we may have a fair value gap where um, the candle closes above candle number two, and that's not a problem, all right? It doesn't mean we can't take that trade. It just means it's very likely that it won't trigger our position. So this is what we're looking for, and we are planning our entry now. We are looking for the entry on the edge of our fair value gap. We're then putting our stop loss at the low of candle one, and then from here, we need to measure and see if our target is appropriate. Now, there's no point in just having a target just way off in the distance with no context as to why price is going to go to that point. So what we need to do is look for our target. Now, the DRS only targets one to twos. And uh, there's a reason for this. And it's, it's kind of a sweet spot with the strategy that... I've collected so much data for this and quite often we'll get price pushed to a one to two. Sometimes it may push higher. It may go to like a one to 10, one to 20, something crazy like that. But those are far and few between. More often than not, we will hit a one to two and price will then retrace it back to either break even or in the opposite direction, setting up for the next session. So one to two is a nice sweet spot. It, it does help us take something away from the markets. So let's look to the left. We are targeting a one to two. So let's look over to see what do we have to target. So let's draw a horizontal line where our target is. We have a horizontal line there. Let's just make this a little bit thinner. So we can see our horizontal line. If we look over to the left, we do have a, it's not really a decent looking order block, but it is a point of interest, something that we might just observe that we may see a reaction from. But what we do have below there on this candle, we do have a fair value gap. So let's mark out this fair value gap and we can see that this is an area that if this is being refilled at some point, okay, this is a very good place for us to have our target. Now, if the target was a bit higher than this, we may see a reaction from this uh, POI or even this fair value gap. It could be enough just to push the other way towards our stop loss. So having our target in a very suitable position is going to put us in a... Uh, situation where our TP is more likely to be hit. So let's move back over to the right. Let's start looking at how this trade is now setting up. So advance forward, we can see the very next candle did trigger us in as we were looking for. And let's advance forward a little bit more. We could then see a little bit more injection in, uh, sorry, a little bit more volume injected into the markets there. We are currently a little bit sideways. We don't have much momentum pushing into the market just yet, but we're in the trade, we're in profit, and everything is looking fine. So we just need to give it a little bit of room to breathe. We're not expecting to be in and out of the trade within seconds and hitting TP instantly. Okay, if it means we are in this trade for the best part of the day, then that's absolutely fine. We just need to give it some room to breathe. And there we go. We did come back to break even. So in situations like this, I get asked quite often, why don't you set stop us to break even at uh, 1R or something like that? And quite simply, I want to minimize the amount of chart time that um, I'm exposed to and also the members. So if we're sitting there monitoring the charts when we are in a trade, you're likely going to start talking yourself out of a trade um, or when you do see price coming down back towards your entry, you might then stop loss to break even and you're going to miss out on quite a few winning trades in this situation. So as you can see, price has um, it, it has mostly gone sideways. We've got quite a few wicks here and now the window is closed. Now, because we are in a trade during this window, we can leave it open until later on in the day. I do have some specific risk management rules for uh, trades that are held in the evening. Um, but for this situation, we're just going to leave the trade open to it either hits stop loss or it hits TP. So moving forward, we can see a, a bit more of a wick. We are still seeing some slow momentum pushing higher. And then eventually we can see we did eventually hit TP. So like I said, this trade was taken live within the community and uh, everyone else took this and managed to take profit from this exact trade. So if you were interested in following the trades live, okay, all the trades I take, winners, losers, they all taken right in front of you uh, and you can join in. If you want to learn the strategy, 
there's the course on our website. Feel free to hit the link in the description. If you're not interested in buying a course, that's fair enough. You're more than welcome to join the Discord as well. There's also a link in the description for that too. So there's an insight to the DRS strategy and how simple the strategy actually is. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.